have the moment of silence right at 751 and then things begin to change and we'll move into a time of, of hope. Leaders in the town of West say it's time to move forward and get past one of the worst industrial disasters in U.S. history. Good evening, I'm Ed Greenberger. Tonight we mark the one-year anniversary of the fertilizer plant explosion that forever changed the town of West and the lives of the people who live there. The ammonium nitrate blast that occurred at the West Fertilizer Company storage facility the night of April 17, 2013, killed 15 people and injured 160 more. More than 150 buildings, homes, apartments, schools were damaged or destroyed. Yet in the wake of all the death, the destruction, and the seemingly shattered lives, as so often happens after events like this, the people of West have risen up. It has become as much a story of rebirth and triumph as one of devastation. Here's what the site of the West Fertilizer Company looks like today. There is nothing there. Figuratively speaking, you might think the people of West have nothing, but as you'll see over the next 30 minutes, that simply isn't true. We begin tonight with our Russell Wild, who covered the explosion for us last year. He is back in West this evening as the town marks the first anniversary of the tragedy. Russell, what is the mood like there tonight? It's, it's very different from how it was uh, one year ago. The community gathered here today for a memorial to mark that one year anniversary to the minute of when that last happened. Uh, they met together out of the place where they normally have a fair and a festival. And they marked the event by sounds of the speakers who talked about hope. They talked about how far they've come and how far they still have to go. They heard messages of hope. They heard messages of loss. And again, they marked that moment that the blast happened with silence. There was just an impulse for people to get outside and see what had happened and to try to offer some kind of help and relief. We can move beyond that night. We won't let our disaster define us, and we won't let our past confine us. Tonight, a pillar of light marks the site that was the West Fertilizer Company. That memorial service just wrapped up. They, of course, took time to honor the 15 people who lost their lives in that explosion. But much of the focus tonight was on moving forward and rebuilding and the work that they still have to do. There was a lot of talk about Easter Sunday that's happening this weekend and the plans that they have as, as such a religious community. The town, the opportunity that the community has tomorrow to have a healing walk to spend Good Friday walking through that area of town that was severely damaged by the blast to see what has been rebuilt and to see what still needs to be done and to take a moment of pause to look back but look of course to the future and what uh, is left to define this city. They don't want to be remembered as a city that was the site of a disaster. They want to be remembered for their history, their heritage and the great things that they're still planning to do here in this community. At all right, thanks a lot, Russell, as they should. Later in the show, you'll see how tonight's event might have started out as a moment of silence, but after that, it turned into a celebration. That's coming up a bit later. <laughs> Newly released video of last year's explosion. It's making the rounds online. Jeff Tabola shot this cell phone video as he was heading home from work. You can see the fire that led to the blast and, and then, of course, the explosion. It's the first video of the explosion that went viral, but or not the first, rather, but Tabola only released this footage this week. The West Volunteer Fire Department suffered heavy losses in the explosion. Of the 15 people who died, five were members of that firefighting family, one that's still being put back together. The firefighters who died had more than 75 years combined experience. Four months after the explosion, five new volunteer firefighters stepped in to fill their shoes. Well, that means the station is back at full strength. There's still a lot of healing to do. What it does mean is we're going to be past all of those first that everybody's gone through, the first Christmas, first birthdays, first anniversaries, things like that, that uh, uh, a hurdle that uh, our families who lost loved ones had to face. So that's, that's the only thing as far as a relief point that we're going to uh, get over. The others who died include civilians who stopped to help people living in nearby apartments and a nursing home and volunteer firefighters from Abbott and Hillsboro. We will have more on them later in the show. 
According to the 2010 census, West had a population of about 2,800. Since the explosion, that number has no doubt, fall, uh, no doubt fallen a bit with some people moving away. Whatever the population is, West is certainly a small town, and small towns usually have a gathering place. After last year's explosion, the gathering place in West was a grocery store. Our Jess Mitchell visited that store a year ago and went back again this week to catch up with two people who recalled what they saw on that fateful night. We see towns like this one every day. West is a great place to live. We have good school. Well, thank you. Good people. Yeah, you'd be good. And we're a very close-knit community. Hey, Heather, could you come to the front? Can nuts. People start their day, look around. say hello to friends, hello. grab the necessities. Yeah, all kinds of groceries. I mean, we're not as big as, like, H-E-B. Ten dollars. Thank you. But it was this store Pork Thank you. that became much more than the items on the shelves. Yeah, it's right here. A year ago, you want any crackers? people came here yeah, we're doing good. after leaving their homes. It reminded me of Iraq, you know, something that you would see in Iraq. It was like, oh my God. Down the street, what looks like an empty lot is where the West Fertilizer Company once stood. There was so much smoke and, and darkness and the houses just looked like they were blown out. Now, a different picture. Some people say that Reagan Street was the most severely damaged and they say they can't believe how much this area has changed. You know, everybody right now is staying busy. You know, as long as the weather permits, we're, you know, some of us are working five, six days a week. Rebuilding homes and take care of each other, their lives. I think a little hitch in the road. Okay, bye bye. Get over it and, and move on. A process that started but is not yet finished. You never forget it now. It'll always be in the back of your mind. In West, Jess Mitchell, Time Warner Cable News. West High School baseball players were among those who lost their homes in the explosion. We met a couple of players who also happened to be twins. As our Rex Castillo shows us, this pair is happy to be back on the diamond. Baseball. For players like Jackson Cuchera, it's a sign spring is here again. And once again, it offers them a chance to escape, one inning at a time. It definitely takes your mind off of everything. I mean, you can just go out and do something that you love and not have to worry about all the, thing, the bad things that have been happening. And I mean, it just takes your mind off of everything and lets you focus on something else. Escape from memories of last year. Jackson and his brother Nick vividly remember that night. The night their lives changed. All those ambulance sirens just going off and all the emergency vehicles just flying by. Their mother, Stephanie, was in their house when the explosion happened. And I remember seeing the blinds and the glass flying in, and I heard two booms. So it's like on TV. Stephanie says it was her son that gave her the strength to keep going that night. I know I was in a daze, and Jackson actually grabbed me by the shoulders and said, it's okay, it's okay, we're going to be fine. The boys say it's their mom who inspires them. I honestly don't know how we made it through it, but somehow we didn't. I feel like she's the one that kept us moving forward and keep going. And now for the Cucheras, hope springs eternal both on and off the diamond. In West, Rex Castillo, Time Warner Cable News. Jackson and Nick plan to play baseball at junior colleges next year. The whole team says they have their eyes set on winning the state championship. Stay with us here on Time Warner Cable News. There's much more to come as we mark the one year anniversary of the explosion in West. Some Texas lawmakers are trying to make sure something like this never happens again. Coming up, a look at possible new regulations for the explosive chemical compound and fertilizer to blame for the accident. And later, two of the people who died in the blast were volunteer firefighters from Abbott, a town only 10 minutes from West. On this day of reflection, family and friends remembered their sacrifice. But as we head to break, here's a look at how West city leaders are moving forward. We are more than the disaster that happened here. And I think it's, it's just crucial for, uh, for our community to, uh, to work together moving beyond it.
first started, it was a mess. We, we repaired several houses, and then after we repaired those, the ones that were demoed, we started rebuilding. That's the reality of rebuilding nearly an entire town. 150 buildings destroyed in the explosion, and a year later, construction on homes and schools continues. This afternoon, West and McLennan County leaders held a news conference to discuss their rebuilding and recovery efforts. West Mayor Tommy Muska read the names of the 15 people who died during the explosion. Fire officials say the city is getting back on track. Several city officials lost their houses in the blast but were back at work the next day, unsure of where they would sleep that night. Mayor Muska says he's worried about the long-term effects of the accident, not just physically but mentally. We're going to have a, a device where if someone needs to talk to someone, whether it be their preacher or our counselor, they'll have that opportunity uh, because that, I think, is the next hurdle that this community will need to face. There's obviously uh, a lot of strong people here, but they, uh, they went through a very traumatic experience. Muska also credited doctors and psychiatrists at Baylor University for helping the town to move on. The town is also considering building a new fertilizer plant because of the agricultural nature of the community. West Rest Haven, the nursing home right across the street from the fertilizer plant, was hit hard in the explosion. One person at the home was killed that night, but today we learned of a deeper toll. The facility's president says around 30 deaths over the past year can be attributed to the high levels of trauma and stress from that night. This is what the nursing home looked like a year ago. The people who live there have been moved all over Texas, including Waco, McGregor, Mart, and Hillsboro. Luckily, most of them were evacuated during the fire that preceded the blast. The nursing home's director, who doubles as the chaplain of the volunteer fire department, remembers people rushing in to help. Not only employees that were on duty at that time, but those that were off duty that came in. Not only that, but the neighborhood showed up, the community of West showed up, and in a lot of circumstances, uh, complete strangers showed up to help those residents get into a safer place. Crews broke ground on a new nursing home earlier this month. It should be open by next summer. Texas lawmakers have been working for a year now to figure out how to avoid another explosion like the one in West. As our John Salazar reports, that includes the possible regulation of ammonium nitrate, both how it's used and stored. Will be to give some Possible changes to industry regulations are on the table for the Homeland Security and Public Safety Committee. We'll be looking at some narrow legislation regarding this issue. Monday's meeting welcomed testimony on how best to prevent another deadly $200 million event like the one in West last year. I think awareness for all of us is the number one tool in our toolbox. The state's fire marshal told the committee changing the way ammonia nitrate is stored may do the trick. Say it's 12 by 30 or 15 by 20, whatever the size, but make out of concrete, stone, or metal. In West, a fire broke out in the fertilizer plant seed room, spreading to wooden bins where the ammonia nitrate was stored. We have to keep fire away from ammonium nitrate. All the best practices keep on going to that point. The committee says any new measures have to keep business cost in mind. Government watchdog groups want regulators to keep the human cost in mind. It's far more expensive when people have their, their lives blown to bits or when they're exposed to chemicals that can kill them or cause them cancer. Tom Smith also wants the committee to mandate public information on where all potentially dangerous materials are stored. Every community ought to have a right to know, ought a right and a right to act and a right to protect themselves. The committee chair believes changes will be made Absolutely. with little Water's state little intervention as long as everyone agrees on exactly what changes, if any, will be made. The question that I'm going to ask everybody is this a waste of time or is this going to be safer if we enact this? From the state capitol, John Salazar, Time Warner Cable uh, News. The state fire marshal's office is expected to give its final recommendations on any changes in June. The Texas legislature would have to approve any proposal. It meets again in 2015. Well, millions more in aid will head to West. Governor Perry's office announced yesterday nearly $5 million more million in disaster assistance. That money will fund infrastructure repairs, including work on water treatment and storage facilities. The state has given $8 million in total recovery aid now. The federal government gave $20 million, mainly to help rebuild the city's schools. Nobody has a better memory of what happened one year ago tonight than the emergency workers, who were the first to arrive at the scene. Baylor University journalism professor Amber Adamson 
is married to a Waco firefighter, and her firefighter brother was in West after the explosion. So she decided to turn the memories of 50 emergency workers into a new book titled The Last Alarm, First Responders' Stories of the West Explosion. Adamson says for many of those first responders, the discussions she had with them were the first time they had talked about the explosion since it happened. Uh, some of them said, oh, no, I didn't really do that much. But then you start talking to them, and, then, and you find out how important and integral their help was that night or in the days following. The last alarm is set to be released in the first week of May. A portion of the sales from the book will go to a group that helps families and departments when a first responder dies. Well, students of West Independent School District have had a rough year, but they've almost reached the end of a long road. Lots more to come here. School officials are at are building not one but two new campuses. We'll show you the challenges the students have faced. And West's church community came together after the explosion, and they're doing so again one year later. We'll look at what they're doing to remember the people who died. Also, West isn't the only place that suffered loss. We'll take you to Abbott, where they're honoring their heroes. Stay with us. If you took one picture of our community in April of 13, I hope that you will go back to the north part of town and take some more because we have made remarkable progress. A year is not a long time to rebuild, but West has made a lot of progress physically and spiritually in that time. The West Independent School District took a big hit in the explosion too. Both West Intermediate School and West High School were heavily damaged and had to be demolished. Superintendent Marty Crawford gave us an update about how his 1,400 students are doing since this happened to their schools. He said they're worried about three classes. Last year's seniors who had to spend the last six weeks of school traveling between West and Lacey Lakeway to go to class. This year's seniors, he's labeled pathfinders. They're having to learn in portable buildings and figure out things as they go along. And next year's upperclassmen who won't have new schools ready until after the first semester. Crawford said the students astound him. Our kids have been an inspiration to us. Um, a lot of times I think that we're wired as adults to overthink things. And kids are kids and they're wired to go to school every day and to enjoy their their final teenage years before they have to get into to real life. And, and so they've really inspired us to to, uh, to rise up and dust ourselves off to make sure that we, we don't sit there and dwell on the, the things that we've been uh, challenged with. Crawford says despite the disaster, student enrollment has remained steady. West High and West Intermediate students have been going to class at the same campus. More than 700 students spent their day in about 20 portable classrooms. And as Rex Castillo shows us, while the explosion may have thrown students off of their normal routine, they say they're adjusting. When you look up the address for West High School, it says the school is on Jerry Moshek Drive. Arriving at destination on left. But when you get there, empty grounds now stand where generations of West residents once graduated. After the explosion, some say they knew the school's demolition was the next step. There, there's just nothing in between that was gonna hold back that force, so I knew it was inevitable. I knew it was gonna happen. Since the beginning of this school year, West High School and Middle School students have come to this campus for classes. Over 750 students are taking class in 20 portable buildings. And while many of the students are used to their new home, there are some things they still miss. I miss um, walking through the front doors and just seeing the cafeteria and playing basketball in the old gym. You know, walking the halls and everything, you know, just like a usual high school, normal. I guess that's one thing and the, just the memories of it. While the school's walls crumbled from the explosion, it did not break the student spirit. Uh, I guess what I've learned from them is that they are more resilient than, than people anticipate. You know, they, they think, a lot of people think that you know, the younger they are, the, the longer it takes, and not necessarily. We just pretty much fell in a hole that was a million feet deep, and we just climbed up just like that within a few months. And that, to me, that's, that's amazing. So that's, I mean, so if you can do that, you can do anything. In West, Rex Castillo, Time Warner Cable News. West ISD officials say they have plans to rebuild both schools in the same location as the old buildings. The project is estimated to cost between 50 and $60 million and opened by Christmas 2015. 
A lot of the damaged homes around the blast site have been removed, but for the First Baptist Church of West, there are no visible signs of last year's explosion. Here's how it looks today. They got lucky in that the building wasn't damaged too badly. The night of the explosion, youth activities were wrapping up and kids were playing outside. And while nobody at the church was seriously hurt, the building itself was inaccessible for a while, so they had to improvise. For us, that, that flatbed trailer became an altar and uh, that ground became holy ground. It's an experience Pastor Crowder wants to recreate. This Sunday, the trailer will return to the field so they can remember those who died and give thanks. The explosion might have happened in West, but it didn't just affect people who live there. It also had a huge impact on many people who live in surrounding towns like Abbott. For that story, we turn once again to our Russell Wilde. As the sun set on the first year since the West Fertilizer Company exploded, family and friends of first responders who lost their lives gathered not to mourn, but to celebrate. Celebration of life. That's what Cyrus and Jerry and all of them were about, enjoying life, exploring. Jerry Chapman and Cyrus Reed were both Abbott firefighters. The small volunteer department rushed to help their neighbors on April 17th, 2013. One year later, they're focusing on the positive. Today's a day of remembrance, good friends, good food, and a lot of good memories. Memories that included Reed's final wishes. He wanted to have his cremains discharged explosively on a cannon. He and I share the love of anything that goes boom. Uh, it, it runs in both our from families. The time he was a small <laughs> child, from the time I was a small child, Fourth of July was one of our favorite times because of the fireworks. So Wednesday night, they gathered to carry out their son's last request. To me, when I seen the fireworks and I seen them going up into the skies, I knew they were up in the heavens watching down over us. Jerry Chapman. We had a special charge made for each of the 12 responders. And as the names were read and those charges went up, the family started cheering. That was my signal then. I think we accomplished what we were trying to do. The night ended with Cyrus Reed's special firework. It was perfect. It was great. Every one of his wishes were on. In West, Russell Wilde, Time Warner Cable News. To be sure, it's been a chaotic, trying year for the town of West. As difficult as it's been for the families and friends of the people who were killed or hurt, and the ones who lost their homes and schools. It's also difficult not to marvel at the way the town and its people have endured and incredibly appear to be optimistic and excited about what the future holds for them. Again, that's what often happens after disasters like the one in West. Life goes on and people thrive. Thanks for joining us tonight. As we leave you, here's a look at Forever Forward, the event that started out as a somber memorial in the wake of death and ended as a celebration of life. Greater things still to be done here You're the God of this city You're the King of these people You're the Lord of this nation You're the light in this darkness You're the hope to the hopeless you're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no like our God.